welcome back to Let's Play Red Dead. Let's Play Saga Red Dead, Uncle where we Tom play Red Dead Redemption and tell cowboy uh, stories. I'm gonna let you say? hear John here, Mary Beth, and then we'll get into it. About a train full of wealthy folk rolling down through Scarlet Meadows, just south of State Border. Yes. Need help with it? I ain't even sure about doing it. Come on, at night, not too guarded. It's perfect. Nah, I ain't thought it through. <laughs> you know, stopping a train, pain in the ass. Sure. But what if we could force a train to stop? <laughs> well, of course. We get a wagon full of something flammable, oil. Put it on the tracks. They see it. They know they either have to stop or die. Ain't no train driver wants to be cooked alive. That is kind of brilliant. Uh, for you. <laughs> and that is a real idea. I think that's the first time you ever had one of them. Shut up. You might be the first bastard to ever have half his brains eaten by a wolf and end up more intelligent. So we're doing it? Yeah, we're gonna need ammunition, guns, look real frightening, and some dynamite to open up the train. I'll get the supplies. Gotta head into town for Abigail anyway. Don't even ask. You go find us an oil wagon. Yeah, I know just the place. They're always heading into that refinery. There's an old rundown shack just over the border. North of a place called Dewberry Creek. Leave it hidden somewhere near there. All right. So we're going to get into the final days and death of Doc Holliday and his funeral and some very kind words that were said by his good friend, Wyatt Earp. Now, in 1887, prematurely gray and badly ailing, Holliday made his way to the Hotel Glenwood near the hot springs of Glenwood Springs, Colorado. He hoped to take advantage of the re, uh, reputed curative powers of the waters, but the sulfurous fumes from the spring may have done his lungs more harm than good. Um, as he lay dying, Holliday is reported to have asked the nurse attending him for a shot of whiskey. When she told him no, he looked at his bootless feet amused. The nurse said that his last words were, this is funny. He always figured that he'd be killed someday with his boots on. Holiday died at 10 a.m. on November 8th of 1887. He was only 36 years old. Tuberculosis had ravaged his body and turned him into an old man way before his time. Now, some modern reports say that Wyatt Earp did not learn of Holiday's death until two months after. But Kate Hornady, uh, or Big Nose Kate, later said that he attended him in his final days. And there are, or there, there's at least one report that actually corroborates his claim, or her claim. Um, hey, Arthur. <clears throat> this is the other point of contention that I was talking about where again, history <laughs> no I got a plan and to make it up to you a oh, plan like the Blackwater ferry job or the modern like historians just Scout don't agree on for some reason um, said you was a, a big shadow cast so by a tiny tree I, don't even know what that means. I choose to believe I big nose Kate I, I, there's no reason <laughs> for her to lie about it and you know that's the whole problem she's riding clothes I just know whenever things get they real, try and talk about these yellow. people Don't like they're lying yellow. about what happened well, in history so I guess and and with me like I can understand how some people would be like oh strawberry well you know like we talked about with Wyatt shooting that guy and killing him and he actually died from an infection that's a cause and effect he got shot he got infected he died three days later that sucks but I would still say that Wyatt killed him he just didn't kill him immediately um, and instead of saying that, you know, the modern historians are like, oh, well, he didn't even, he didn't even kill him at all. Like, yeah, he did. And in this regard, um, there's only one person telling a story about who was there when he died. And they're like, no, that didn't happen. What do you mean? There's no other report saying why it wasn't there. They're just saying he wasn't there. How many men? 
I, I don't I don't understand. But in either case, you guys know how I feel about modern historians. Now, um, the Glenwood Springs Uti Chief, uh, which was a newspaper, in November 12, 1887, wrote in uh, wrote in its obituary or in his obituary that Holiday had been baptized in the Catholic Church. Uh, this was based on a correspondence written between Holiday and his cousin, um, uh, who uh, his sister Mary um, Malini, which was a Catholic nun. Now, there's no baptism record um, has ever been found uh, for for Holiday, but. He wrote to his cousin that he was baptized in the Catholic Church, and it's not like records don't go missing from time to time. So I tend to believe Holiday, unless he was just being nice to his cousin to make her feel better about absolution and all of that. It's very possible. Um, now, Holiday's mother had been raised a Methodist, and she had later joined a Presbyterian church, which was her husband's uh, faith, but objected to the Presbyterian doctrine and reconverted to Methodism publicly before she died, saying that she wanted her son John to know what she believed. Holiday himself... Um, had struck up friendships uh, with both a Catholic priest, uh, Father E.T. Downey, and a Presbyterian uh, minister, Reverend W.S. Randolph. Um, now, he was friends with these people, but I don't believe Doc really ever went to church that much. Uh, both of these men were in Glenwood Springs. When he died, Father Downey was out of town, and so Reverend Randolph presided over right. his burial at 4 p.m. On, on the same day that Holiday died. Uh, the services were reportedly attended by many friends. Now, Erp, there's no way Erp could have actually been at the funeral. But, Holiday was not buried the same day he died. Before they get into it was town. not common to do that Still back then, there. and it was in November. Horse, tough guy. So, Holiday was buried in the Lindwood here. Cemetery overlooking hey, Glenwood Springs. Man. And since Holiday died in November, the ground may have been frozen. Um, Look, now, here here's are. where we get into the contention Round again time. between modern up. and uh, <laughs> of the day historians. Some modern historians, such as Bob Bowes, speculate that it would have been impossible to transport him to the cemetery which was only accessible by a difficult mountain road or to dig a grave because the ground was frozen. However, there's been evidence located that many other people were transported and buried in Linwood Cemetery at the same time the same month of that year. So Yeehaw, whoever thinks that the modern historians have it won over. There's plenty of evidence to say that it could have happened, and this guy's like, oh, it couldn't have happened. It was November. I just don't understand why they want to argue with what another historian has already written down. History recorded this as having happened, and these guys are like, no, it didn't. <laughs> with, with no evidence to back it up, and that's the problem. If you can find something in history that someone wrote down that is indeed wrong, and you have evidence to prove it, then absolutely raise a point of contention. But with no evidence, you're just going to speculate and be like, no, nah, that didn't happen. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I don't, uh, I don't know. In either case, Doc was buried in the Linwood Cemetery, but the exact location of his grave is uncertain. It was either 403 or 404. Um, the, the official record for the cemetery uh, is, is gone, and 
there was no tombstone. And some claim that Holliday's father, Major Henry Holliday, a man of means and influence, had his son exhumed and reburied in Griffin Oak Hills Cemetery um, where, he, where he lived. Um, some said that, but I'm not sure. And Major Henry Holliday never said that he did that. There were just some people who said that. So I'm not sure if he did or not. Holiday may be uh, in, in, where, you know, in his home. Uh, he may still be in Linwood. Hold up there. I'm a feller. Now, Wyatt Earp spoke about his friend, um, and he spoke some very beautiful words about Doc Holliday. And I'm going to read them a uh, quote from Wyatt Earp, and we'll finish up the story of Doc Holliday as we have this beautiful gunfight, which is only fitting for, for the end of the tale of a great man. Wyatt Earp says, I found him a loyal friend and good company. He was a dentist whom necessity had made a gambler, a gentleman whom disease had made a vagabond, a philosopher whom life had made a caustic wit. A long, lean, blonde fellow, nearly dead with consumption, and at the same time, the most skillful gambler and ner nervous, speediest, deadliest man with a six gun I ever knew. There's more of them. Move up, Morgan. And what I would say is looking at this man's life and you know what we've talked about the ability for doc to shoot and not kill people the ability to stand down a bullet uh coming at him and not flinch and all of those things and the speed and accuracy in which this man had like when he saved wyatt's life in the bar um I would say that was probably true. Doc Holliday was probably one of the fastest, most deadliest men of the West. Um, and it's a shame that history or the modern day historians are trying very hard to discredit his ability and saying that he didn't win gunfights and that he didn't kill any men. Uh, when we started this whole affair and we talked about Doc Holliday, confirmed kills on Doc Holliday were two and throughout the time of telling these stories I have uncovered at least seven that uh, reports say that he killed um, but modern history wants to confirm two um, even though the historians of the time confirmed seven and confirmed the winning of numerous gunfights. Um, and so, like, you know, it's like a, I've, I've said a couple of times. I prefer to judge history by the people who lived it um, rather than the people who are just trying to discredit it. Um, and you take that as you will, you know. Um, Doc Holliday, throughout the stories we've told here, and I didn't tell all of them, I found seven men that Doc killed and numerous gunfights that Doc won. Um, there were a lot of gunfights that Doc won by not killing a man. And that's impressive. He, he chose to not kill more men than he killed in life when he could have killed them all. Now, we're going to go ahead and end it here. Make sure the gang Doc Holliday was yeah, one hell of a gunman like and uh, and a hero of the Old West for sure. Like but uh, that ends the story of Doc Holliday. We'll finish out the story of Wyatt Earp over the next couple of episodes. I hope you've been enjoying these. Um, 
and y'all have a wonderful week. Thanks for watching, everybody.